physics laws are fundamental in order to understand what surrounds us and how to solve different problems. In this first video we are going to see five of the most important laws with some real-life applications. Meanwhile, in a second video we will introduce other five important laws. The first one is Archimedes' principle. It states that the upward buoyant force that is exerted on a body immersed in a fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid that the body displaces. It's very important in fields like fluid mechanics. For example, it's fundamental to understand why a boat does not sink despite the extremely high weight. Indeed, a boat displaces a huge amount of water and for this reason it will have a force to counterbalance the weight of the boat itself. To compute the buoyant force, it's sufficient to apply this easy formula where rho represents the density of the fluid, g the acceleration due to gravity, and v is the volume of the displaced fluid. Now let's analyze Pascal's law. It's a principle useful in fluid mechanics dealing with transmission of fluid pressure. It states that the pressure change at any point in a confined incompressible fluid is transmitted throughout the fluid such that the same change occurs everywhere. So, considering the fact that the pressure change is transmitted everywhere, lowering the area of a piston gives us lower forces. Meanwhile, increasing the surface of the piston increases the force developed. This observation is the principle behind hydraulic lifting and pressing devices. For example, hydraulic jack and hydraulic press. But you also use this principle every day when you are using the braking system of your car. Now, let's briefly talk about Doppler effect. Basically, it's the change in frequency of a wave in relation to an observer due to the relative motion between the source and the observer. To understand this concept practically, you can think about an ambulance with the siren switched on, passing near you. During the approach, the frequency perceived by you is higher and will be identical in the exact time in which the ambulance is passing by and finally it will be lower while the ambulance is going away. The reason behind this effect is that when the source of wave, the ambulance in this case, is moving towards the observer, each successive wave crest is emitted from a position closer to the observer than the crest of the previous wave. So each wave takes less time to reach the observer than the previous one, causing an increase in frequency. Let's change topic now with Coulomb law. This is an experimental law useful to quantify the amount of force between two stationary and electrically charged particles. The force that is generated between charged bodies is called Coulomb force. In the scalar form, this is the formula. Ke is Coulomb's constant, and the value of this constant is 9 times 10 to 9 newton meter squared over Coulomb. Meanwhile, Q1 and Q2 are the magnitude of the charges, and R is the distance between them. Now we can also introduce the Fleming rule, also known as right-hand rule. It's very useful to find the direction of induced current when a conductor attached to a circuit that moves in a magnetic field. It's called right-hand rule because in order to find the direction of the induced current, you will use the first three fingers of your right hand. The thumb is pointing the direction of the motion of the conductor relative to the magnetic field. The first finger is pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. And finally, the second finger represents the direction of the induced current through the conductor. This figure is a representation of how you should point your fingers. Generally speaking, the Fleming rule can be used to determine the direction of the vector resulting from the cross product operation between two vectors. That's it for the first part of this topic, stay tuned to learn more, please subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed the video.